Hey, hey, welcome back to another video. Good to see you guys. Hope you're doing well. Uh, today, we're going to talk about further graphs and solving inequalities in particular. Um, but as always, we're going to start with a joke. So why did the physics teacher not get along with the biology teacher? There's no chemistry. Okay, All right, that's my dog. Hope you can, I don't know if you can hear him in the background. I think he's upset because I'm doing this video very early in the morning, but let me share my screen and we'll get going. Doggy. Okay. Hopefully that stops in a moment, but let me just go through this. Uh, this is under the topic of further graphs. Uh, and we're going to be solving inequalities uh, and sketching solutions on the number line. Um, now, how do we do this? If you guys know how to solve usual equations, uh, normal equations is basically the same, except uh, you flip or reverse the inequality sign if you multiply or divide by a negative number. Now, I'll show you why that is probably in class. Um, but just remember, whenever we divide or multiply by a negative number, we're going to swap it around. Okay, now let's take a look here, how to sketch a number line. Okay, now this is gonna be after you've found the solution, how do you sketch a number line? Boom, got a line, put some arrows on it, put some numbers on it. So let's just pick some numbers that we like here. I'm gonna pick some random numbers. I'm gonna go, okay, uh, let's go minus one, zero, one, two, and that's it. There's your number line. Um, now on the right here, we kind of have these like colored in dots and arrows and these kind of open dots and arrows. Um, when we're talking about inequalities, if there's a colored dot, it just kind of means that we, it's included. So that means it's greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. Um, if we've got these open circles, it just means we're gonna be less than or greater than one or the other. Um, that's kind of how they work. So for example, if I wanted to sketch the solution of X is less than two, the way that I'll do it is, okay, well, I'm at two. So I'm gonna draw an open circle over two because it's not including two. And then it's gonna be less than two. So I'm just gonna draw the arrow this way. And that tells me that as long as my solution is less than two, it kind of works. And that arrow technically goes on forever. Now, if X is greater than or uh, equal to negative one, this is number, this is part B now. I'll do this one in red. So it just means I'm gonna be greater than or equal to one. Now I'm gonna color in this dot because now we're including it. And it's gonna be greater than that. So we're gonna be pointing in that direction. Okay, now I'm just gonna move on because there's a couple things that we're gonna do here. So the first one is we're going to see how an, equal, an inequality works by actually seeing it graphically. Now, graphically is a great method of understanding it. It's just at some point, you don't want to be drawing a graph every time. But there's it's going to be certain questions where you're going to have to want to know what is going on in an inequality so you can kind of see what's like how it works. All right, so if we take a look at A here, um, it says... We've got this graph here, y equals x squared take away one. It's just a nice parabola that's been shifted down once. So I know immediately that this is going to be one. And this is just because I know my graphs. I know that's going to be negative one and that's going to be positive one. Okay. Those are your x intercepts. Sorry, I've got a bit of a runny nose this morning, so deal with it. And now what we've got here is part I. We want to see where x squared take away one is actually greater than zero. Okay. Now, I could try to solve this algebraically and I'll get there, but the easier way is if I know what this graph looks like, I'm just trying to see, okay, when is this graph here, x squared take away one, when is it greater than zero? So in other words, when is the, <coughs> so it's kind of like y equals, when is this graph greater than the graph y equals zero? Okay, so I'm gonna maybe use a different color here. Let's use the color light blue. All right, so y equals zero is this line here. 
that's just on top. So all I'm saying is, when is the parabola, right? Y equals X squared to take away one. When is actually go greater or above the line Y equals zero? Well, here I can see it's for these X values here. I'll do this in green. For all the X values greater than one, I'm gonna to start to have some solutions where the graph is greater. And when all my solutions are negative one and less, that's when I'm gonna get it. And I'm gonna have these open circles here. <clears throat> and so the way that I answer this question is, well, X has to be greater than one or X has to be less than negative one. If I was to draw these here, it will look very similar to the graph up here. It'll be, there's negative one here, positive one here, and it's going to be an open circle either way, because I can be less than negative one or greater than one. And those are my solutions. Same thing here. If X squared take away one is to be less than zero this time. So I'm trying to figure out, okay, when is it actually under? So I can see here, let's pick a different, yeah, I should keep picking, I should stop picking blue. All right, now, when is it actually under the X axis? It's kind of going to be less when I want it to be less than zero. So it's going to be less than the line underneath. So I'm going around in a little bit of circles. It's quite early in the morning. Just stick with me for a moment. So when is this graph y equals x squared take away one less than zero this time? Well, I can see it's actually less than zero for the x values between negative one and one. Exactly. That's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say, well, x has to be in between. And so I'm going to write it like this. It's going to be between negative one and one. So if you have these two kind of like brackets or these three little sections, it just means that X is greater than negative one, but it's less than one. So it's kind of like jammed in between. So we write it as if X was in between those two. So that there would be your answer. And that is it. Happy to leave your answer like that. Or if you want to draw out your line, it'll look like this. All right, negative one, one. And again, I'm gonna leave my circles open and I'm just gonna connect them just like that. So that means all my answers, I can have anything that's in between negative one and one, but not including negative one and one. Okay. Now, uh, same thing would happen here. It's just this time, um, they haven't drawn a graph for you. So say for example, if you know what a graph looks like, you can actually solve it graphically. So if we've got X minus one, X minus three, all I know about this graph here is I'm actually gonna cut at negative one or I'm gonna cut at positive one and positive three. So then I know it's gonna be positive parabola. It's gonna look a little bit like this. My graph is gonna look like that. Okay, now a very similar thing here. When is this graph gonna be less than or equal to zero? So less than or equal to zero. So it means I'm talking about this kind of point in time here. Yeah. And I can see there for this is X has to be, I should label this, this was one, this was three. X has to be in between one and three. So that's what I'm gonna write. And this time I'm gonna add the greater than or equals two sign. And it's gonna be between one and three. Again, sketching this out, I'll go, okay, there's one, there's three. And this time I'm going to include the one and the three. That's all the answers in between. Right, but if I have this one, when is it greater than zero? I can see that it's greater than zero for this part here, that part there. All right, so when is it greater than zero? So for this one here, X needs to be greater than or equal to three or X has to be less than or equal to one. And if it's two separate sections, which you can kind of see it is here, you write it as two separate sections. And again, sketching out your answer, we've got one, we've got three, and we just want to be this way or that way. And that would be how you sketch your solutions. Okay. Now let's go on to solving things algebraically. 
Okay, now this is where it gets a little bit quicker. It's kind of just like solving a usual normal equation. Um, so let's smash through a couple of these. All right, remembering that the only exception is if you divide by a negative number, you flip the sign. So 3x take away one is less than five. Let's just solve for x. So I'm going to have 3x is less than six and then divide through by three. So x has to be less than two. That's it. Sketch your solution. Okay, just put the number two there and it's going to be an open circle. It's going to be less than, so I'm going to be pointing towards the left. Okay, for this one here, if I've got something that's a little bit more intense, let's just solve bit by bit. I'm going to say negative three X is less than or equal to, and I'm going to take away five. So it's going to be one. Now I'm going to divide through by negative three. So that means I'm now going to have to flip the sign. Okay, notice how I flip the sign here. Okay, that's important because I've divided by negative three. So now it just becomes negative one third. And again, sketching it out on number line, just pick negative one third here and X needs to be greater than or equal to. So I'm gonna color in the circle, point towards the right. Moving on. Oh, actually, I guess that's it. I'm gonna stop there for now. Uh, we're going to do, I guess, in the next one, we'll talk about, I guess, more difficult ones like quadratics, absolute values, and when you have a variable in the denominator. But that's it. Hopefully you guys cope okay. Let me know if you have any questions. <sighs> I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.